So hello everyone, my name is Ray. I'm from the SDK lab uh, at the geography department. And today I'm going to bring you a new idea I currently have, and it's about the I Ching and the geography. So first, how many of you have heard about the I Ching before? Oh, quite a lot. So for those of you who, who didn't heard about the I Ching, I'll first give you a very brief introduction of what is I Ching. So I Ching is about the book of change, and it is originated from the late 9th century BC. So it's quite a long time. It already has a history of over 300 years old. And it is originally designed for divin uh, divination. Uh, and at the beginning, it is recorded on the turtle shells. And uh, until when we created the paper, it is recorded on papers using brush together with ex explanation and, and um, com commentaries from other uh, masters of I Ching. And uh, if you do not heard about I Ching before, I think you must also heard about the Taoism, um, Confucius, the Feng Shui, and the astrology. And, but you didn't know the fact that all these uh, Chinese wisdoms are actually has a very, uh, I Ching has a very big influence on all these Chinese wisdoms. And in I Ching, uh, it categorizes stuff from the first and the non-polarity, and it, it then sub uh, sub subdivided into the bipolar, and the bipolar is then subdivided into the four shapes, and from the four shapes, we generated the uh, eight patterns, and the, from the eight patterns, we could have the 64 diagrams. And for these 64 diagrams, we could categorize all the stuff in the world. And uh, we have different interpretations and the semantics for each of these diagrams. So uh, why I'm interested in I Ching? Because I think the core philosophy under I Ching is very interesting. First, it is uh, about the, that everything is changing. But there are rules and the patterns behind these changes. And I Ching is to summarize and simplify these rules and the patterns. So, does it sound familiar to us? Because we are all scientists, does it, this, all this stuff are also the goal for science. But still, in the scientific community, we still do not regard the I Ching as uh, other science. Instead, some of us still regard this as some superstition, uh, especially in China. So, but however, we should accept the fact that in China, the Chinese medicine, archi uh, architecture, management, and philosophy, they all have a very, uh, uh, so, uh, uh, some uh, root from the I Ching. And it's here I give you some examples of your I, I Ching. I will first of, uh, especially focus on this one. This is actually a compass, but in, a, uh, in contrast to our traditional compass, it has more semantics around the outer side of the compass in the center. And we also use I Ching in the medicine. We categorize human bodies, human organs into different diagrams of I Ching. And, uh, how does it relate to the geography? So I think I Ching can answer questions like, was it going to rain? And if so, does well, it affect the crops? And is a good time to go hunting and, and this stuff? And all these are related to the spatial temporal perspective of humans' activities. And it is exactly the same to what we geographers do here. So I bring up several research questions here. I will not go one by one for them. But I think they are very interesting. And finally, I regard the I Ching and the science are the two trails to the peak of the truth when we're climbing the knowledge mountains. Thanks a lot. Sorry for